Hello, howdy guys, how's it going? So we uh, come out here to do something I've been talking about doing now for uh, about a month. And that is we're going to be doing an overnighter and uh, attempting to do some metal detecting. And this will be the very first time that I have uh, actually used this. I mean, I took it, you know, threw some metal on the ground and scanned over it just to make sure it would work. But I've not actually done any uh, genuine metal detecting exploration. Uh, but this is a metal detector uh, by Dr. Otech. I found it's supposed to be like one of the number one rated metal detectors on Amazon. I don't know how well that's going to get because of the sun glare. But... Uh, it's supposed to have a pretty good depth. Um, I actually come to where that one hunting blind of mine uh, was. Like, we, you know, we removed that tarp long ago. Um, and now it's starting to get warm up and a bunch of the creepy crawlers are out. And this area is normally pretty bad for them. So, um, got the tent. Like, yeah, there's already ants and stuff crawling on the fly. So, I'm glad I opted for... Uh, <laughs> For bringing the tent on this one and i got some other new gear that i want to do some uh you know initial uh initial testing with because uh first things first since uh, it is sunny like the uh the temperature is 60 degrees but then like in the direct sunlight it feels quite a bit warmer so i've got a new uh electric water filter uh, that i got because you know during the summertime just being able to process uh water filter water that much faster and i got this hydro pack two liter bladder um and so this is a yo-yo electric water filter i'll show you guys it more up close here in a second when we go down to the creek to acquire some water and then i got a uh, a new pocket knife that i want to test out before i put it in one of my uh, survival slash edc kits um it's a lothar folding knife uh, just like that fixed blade y'all see me wear um a couple times but it's a very large one and i'm going to take and carve out some stakes so that we can kind of mark places where we hit on something uh, if we do like i have no clue uh, if we'll find anything today um I mean, all we can do is look, so. <clears throat> okay, so just like that pump filter we've used before, this yo-yo filter, uh, you know, it works the same way, except for it's got a little electric uh, pump in it. Um, and the only criticism I have for this thing so far is its storage sack is way too small, and I don't like how you have to store the tubing and stuff on the outside where this mesh is. Um, because I feel like if you had this, like let's say you wanted to attach this to the outside of your pack one, that could fall out easily. And if you was going through briars or something, uh, it wouldn't be that hard for uh, something to poke a hole in them. So, so yeah, the black line, that's your uh, intake. And your intake goes in the bottom port. That's fitted on there good. This thing does also have a little light on it, um, which there's absolutely no way you'll be able to see that in the current lighting conditions. And it's got a float as well, but that's not necessary. I'm actually going to take a small uh, rock and... Kind of weighed it down right there at the deepest point in the shallow creek area. You want to try to not contaminate your uh, clean line. Like this this water's safe anyways if I had to bet my life on it. But we'll go with this for now. And then you stick your other hose on here. Because this is going to be really nice. I got a kayaking trip planned uh, at the beginning of May. And so just being able to fill this up. Then you just hit the power button. And it'll just take a second to kind of prime itself. And there we go. It is pumping. Let's try to get it in a way to where the line won't kink. And I'll bring y'all closer so you can. Because it will just take it a second to take and get the air um, out of the lines whenever you first start pumping it. Because I always take and try to drain it to the best of my abilities before I store it. That way you don't have to worry about any mold or bacteria growth uh, in your filter or in the lines. Just like that, she's full. And by the way, I think whenever I uh, took this bag out of my pack, I said that it was a 2 liter. It's actually a 4 liter. Um, and so we... Fill this thing almost to the top in just a couple of minutes. That's plenty of water because I got an MRE, so we'll need to use a bit of water for that. Plus, you know, MREs are uh, notorious for making you extremely thirsty. Went and I cut this uh, low hanging limb off of a tree. I think this is, uh, this ain't beach. Um, I'm drawing a blank on the name of this tree at the moment, but anyways, uh, it'll be good because after we take our uh, knife and scrape the bark off, it'll be nice and white and uh, green. So uh, I don't, you know, I guess we might not find a single 
thing. Like not even. Hopefully, we don't find many nails in here because they're you know. Uh, the only thing I've ever really found in like this section of mountain has been empty metal cans and glass bottles. So. I mean, it's not like we're covering a football field, but I just kind of like to know for future reference certain sections. Okay, so now this is the pocket knife. Uh, like once again, this is uh, by the same company that makes that one fixed blade that I've used in a couple of the most recent videos. Um, and this one is some, one I had my eye on for a great pocket knife to put into a survival kit because it's very sturdy, robust, and for a pocket knife, it has a really long blade. And that was uh, one of the biggest things I was looking for is just a really nice, sharp, long uh, blade. This is D2 steel. And uh, it's got a very sturdy, there's absolutely no wiggle and no flex at the uh, joint where it bends. It's got a very smooth one-handed open capacity. So now we just need to test the sharpness and make us some uh, stakes. Which so far I've not come across any D2 steel knives that aren't, aren't just really sharp out of the box. Because I'm putting very minimal pressure right here. Because I, I want to take and just get a good variety of strokes on each one of these so there's that and then near the top we're just going to remove bark so we get that nice white coloring so now we just need to do that with the rest of these and like i do like the case that it comes in it allows you to keep the tool to where you can uh, disassemble the handle you know and do maintenance on this knife if you're using it a lot but whenever i put this into the kit that i have in mind so it's going to be a smaller kit uh probably going to uh, just take and fold it up as is to save space. Okay, so there is our four stakes. As you can see the blade still, you know, absolutely no uh, nowhere just from that minimal usage, but we'll, uh, we'll continue to play around with that. So now we gotta figure out and make sure we have our metal detector set on the proper uh, settings. Okay, so hopefully the interface will show up, but you hit this button, power, that's what our display looks like, and then it says mode select. Okay, so I think AM stands for all metal. Uh, it, this right here takes a nine volt battery, so I've got one of those in here. For starters, let's take and just kind of go around the front of the something right here with this one you get a trowel that comes with it i mean i have my titanium trowel but it looks like whatever might be somewhere right here um, we'll go ahead and try digging for this one um but it's got like a depth estimation thing <laughs> All right, that first hole I took and I hit a bunch of roots and a big rock. So I think that rock might be, it just had a lot of metal in it uh, or iron, uh, but it was hitting really hard. Like I took and sweep that whole area behind and whole area in front and got nothing. This area right here seemed to, uh, seemed to set it off. So if we don't have that same root problem. That might be our uh, biggest downfalls unless we can take and find stuff that is like 100% surface level being able to get down to it but i will say this is a great way to mix things up and it is uh it is fun just the, the pure idea of potentially finding something interesting makes it worth doing
So it's weird. It's like running like right through here. Like we'll definitely, I want to keep scouting around and stuff and just see if we can mark some locations. But to be honest, I might not be able to uh, really do this uh, to the full capabilities of the metal detector without bringing like my military entrenching tool because I think just having this single trail is not I guess it'd be great if it's not on Rudy soil or on the beach somewhat sharp and has teeth on it for getting through these really thin roots but like we're, we're hitting roots that are thicker than uh, my thumb it's over so nothing hurts itself or I don't hurt myself I got like pee in the night or something we're gonna just keep this stake and uh, we'll see if we can find any more locations to stake out we'll just have to revisit this area with our uh, entrenching tool. That is very fun, uh, and my curiosity is killing me about what it's hitting on these spots because I think I definitely got it calibrated and dialed in now. So let's get out here very soon with a uh, heavier duty digging tool. But I, I got two more locations marked. It was hitting on pretty strong, so fingers crossed. You see, I'm not expecting to find any treasure, just uh, would like to find some uh, you know, just interesting interesting items you know, we'll be able to take and tuck this like it's not going to rain but we'll be able to tuck the metal detector it'll fit perfectly under either side of these uh, vegetables so we're good there I need to take and refill my canteen all right we got that so the next order of business will be uh to uh, make our food i just got to i got to do it somewhere that's not here because if we drip or drop any of that food from the MRE, these ants are going to absolutely molest me, so we don't want any of that. We're gonna come up here by this giant white oak tree. You're right, right to my left of me is that deer blind. And before it gets too dark, which will happen pretty fast, let's go ahead and get our food going. Now, because of the luck we, we normally have with these MREs, and this is uh, spaghetti with uh, beef and sauce. I've had this one twice before, and it's normally really good. Put it away from the tent because we don't want the ants to, uh, to bother us. Main thing is just watching the... Okay, we got apple jelly and peanut butter. Milk chocolate beverage powder. Raisins, nice. And yeah, we'll go, we'll try the, uh, we'll try the heater snack bread and chocolate chip toaster pastry. I think those are good too, but so this is one where you don't really have a main and a side. You just have the main. Okay, there we go. Now for the part that normally we screw up. Just get that water on there. Okay, well, it's making noise. But we have been fooled before. Lean that over right there. It's all good. We know that the raisins are solid. They're normally always really good and moist, and they are. So that eating pad is getting hot, but it's not blowing steam out like it normally does. <sighs> you had to take and uh, shut up my rain fly because uh it's it's starting to like sprinkle a little bit and it said uh, like a 10 percent like pretty much no rain it's showing a clear day like, i don't think it's going to rain i think it's just overcast and is just uh like misting a bit so trying to continuously work this around so that this can hopefully heat evenly oh there's a little bush plane flying over I mean, this really does just seem like mostly a dessert menu. I mean, you've got, uh, like I said, milk chocolate, uh, cocoa beverage powder. You've got a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and a chocolate chip toaster pastry. That's a bit, uh, this one's a bit of a sweet tooth selection for my personal taste. Well, this thing feels nice and warm all the way through. And this one, 
I think it's heated it uh, halfway efficiently this go round, which is a nice contrast to uh, the usual. And there we go. Now it goes perfect eating temperature. I like this because there's like a really good, almost 50-50 blend of meat to pasta. And it's also, it is kind of heavy on the sauce. And like, <clears throat> me personally, that's something I like. That was very good. Most all the pasta MREs are really good, but I mean, I feel like that's something that just uh, lends itself to being, you know, packaged and preserved well in these uh, retort pouches. <clears throat> so, I mean, I guess we'll, uh, we might give the peanut butter and jelly a try, because I think the apple jelly or jam, I don't know if it's, which one it is, apple jelly, I don't think it's as sweet as some of the other jellies and jams. I screwed opening up the pouch, so... MRE peanut butter is uh, pretty sure you could use this to glue an engine block together. No way we went and got all that extra water. <laughs> Have we done better with the jam? This stuff might not be as runny as I remember it being. Okay, this is not too sweet. Alrighty, well, I'm going to take and finish this. <clears throat> Like together, it goes. It does go really well together because the peanut butter kind of overpowers the jelly. It helps dial down the sweetness. Because I'm not going to be able to eat the uh, chocolate chip toaster pastry or or the cocoa drink right now. I just those are two flavor uh, profiles that uh, don't really match up with spaghetti and uh, meat sauce and a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So this will be good to hold me over. Plus, I got uh, some uh, you know chocolate chip granola bars in my bag, but they're like. Uh, I think they're Elevate is the, what they are. And like, they're not, they're not really sweet at all. They're more like of the oatmeal flavor. So, yeah, guys. That said, I'm going to finish this PB&J, and then I will clean up and figure out how I'm going to store all my stuff underneath the uh, vegetable of that tent, and uh, I'll get back with y'all whenever it's time to hit the hay. <clears throat> so, uh, I took the metal detector, and... Shoved it underneath the uh, the slightly smaller vegetable on that back side and it still fits just fine. The main thing that you have to keep protected is uh, just that main control panel area. Off my canteen so we can store our uh, water bag inside our pack so nothing happens to it. Oh, all right, guys, it is time to hit the hay. And wrap my pillow with my shemag that I had in my bag. Oh, let's get the shoes off. Usually it's getting a bit breezier, and it did sprinkle a little bit. When I say sprinkle, I mean the, uh, the lightest definition of the word. But still surprised that we got any precipitation. Sleeping pad still feels good and uh, inflated. It's just kind of hard to uh, you know, bring you guys in here. For the sign there, yeah, I wish I knew if there was going to be, like, if, if I knew there wasn't going to be any more uh, any more precipitation, I would leave this uh, flap rolled back, but I don't want to wake up, which, like, a lot of this is still covered. It wouldn't, you know, I guess I'd figure it out in time to close, like, close up shop, but... Yeah, guys, I'm just going to take and get cozy, fold the wooby underneath my feet. Oh, with all that said, guys, I will, uh, I guess I'll see y'all in the morning. Good night. Oh, uh, good morning, guys. The uh, the birds are out, and there's a uh, an airplane flying over. 
Um, I did. I slip in a little bit. Uh, it kind of looks a little brighter in here, I think, because this uh, bright orange, orangish yellow color kind of seems to cast uh, a little bit brighter light whenever the the warning's shining through it. I know this little uh, metal detector adventure is probably a bit disappointing or uh, you know anticlimactic because I mean uh, we just we got to bring a slightly heavier duty shovel in order to uh, tackle the tackle the roots and just like the the mountain ground system, but. Definitely think we'll eventually find some pretty interesting stuff. So looking forward to that. Now, if I ever go to anywhere like any beaches or, you know, along any lakes or anything, fishing and stuff, I could set up a pole and we could just see if we find anything interesting that way. Because this, this metal detector, it is submersible, like, you know, up throughout the, the handle, like, until you get to, like, the control box. So, like, it's also, you can use it in the ocean. So that's, uh, that's in the cards at some point. But, uh, yeah, guys, so as always, thanks for watching, uh, Please hit the thumbs up button, um, subscribe if you haven't already, share our channel with your friends, family, anybody that enjoys good old outdoor activities. Uh, you know, like if you're interested in any of the gear, you can check the links in the description uh, if it's gear that I'm able to link to. Um, and as far as like it still being on the market, and uh, check out the links from other two YouTube channels. So with all that said, guys, until the next one, adios.